Next, we are going to take a brief look at the different ways that the network host can connect to a local area network or to a wide area network. We have to be aware that the hosts could be just a few feet apart or they could be on the opposite sides of the world. The five different connections are Ethernet connection Integrated Service Digital Service or ISDN Digital Subscriber Line or DSL Dial-up modem and wireless connection the first and what was the most popular method of connecting to a network was using an Ethernet connection. Here we have the old PCI Ethernet card, a PCI Express Ethernet card and a USB Ethernet adapter. All have one thing in common and that is an RJ45 socket that allows it to be connected to a network. The PCI and the PCI Express fits into the spare slot on the motherboard. Once the drivers have been installed, the computer is ready to be connected to a network via a standard Cat5e cable, and we should be dealing with the different types of cabling later on in the coursework. Most motherboards, like the one shown here, have a built-in Ethernet interface, as do most laptops, but in the absence of one, an USB Ethernet adapter can be used. The next connection we shall be looking at is probably something you will very rarely find in a modern office environment. But before the introduction of high speed internet technologies, the Integrated Service Digital Network, or ISDN, was a popular way of achieving a reasonably fast connection to a remote network. The ISDN interface or terminal adapter would be installed in the host, similar to the Ethernet interface, or externally, and this was connected to an ISDN network, which is a specialised telephone line that is normally provided by the telecoms provider. An alternative to this is the existing telephone line is multiplexed, or the signal is split up into two channels. One would be dedicated to telephone conversation, and the other to a broadband signal, and both could be used at the same time. It is also possible that some of these connection technologies are combined. For example, it is possible to have an Ethernet interface connected to an external ISD interface, which in turn is connected to the ISDN line. The next connection is called Digital Subscriber Line or DSL. Digital Subscriber Line is a family of technologies that is used to transmit data over the telephone lines. Digital means that the data is processed digitally. Subscriber means in most cases the user must subscribe to the service and line normally means the telephone line. In telecommunication marketing, the DSL is widely understood to mean Isometrical Digital Subscriber Line or ADSL, the most common installed DS technology for internet access, once again using the multiplexing technique. ADSL is similar to ISDN as they both use broadband technologies to achieve greater speeds. However, ADSL can achieve much higher speeds than the 128 kilobits per second provided by ISDN to over 10 megabits per second using the latest DSL standards. The bit rate of ADSL is greater towards the customer premises known as downstream than the reverse known as upstream. This is why it is called isometric because the downstream does not match the upstream. Once again, the interfaces come in different forms, internally or externally, also to reduce the crossover noise from the telephone signal and the broadband signal during multiplexing process, a suppressor can be fitted. Before broadband technology became affordable enough to use within the home, the dial-up connections was the standard method of remote connectivity and internet access. Modems were installed internally or externally to the host. This is then connected to the plain old telephone service, also known as POTS. The modem takes the digital signal produced by the host, which is just a series of zeros and ones, and converts them into an analog signal that can be transmitted over the POTS. This process is called modulation. The analog signal is essentially a sound signal. Anyone who ever used a dial-up connection will no doubt remember the loud screeching sound made when the connection was established. Uh, 
and this was the data from the computer in analogue form. The receiving system then takes the analogue signal and changes it back to digital data that the receiving host can understand. This process is known as demodulation. The word modem is a contraction of the two words modulation and demodulation. This type of connection used to be very very popular but most phone lines will only support a transfer bit rate of 56 kilobits per second. So the chances of coming across this type of connection is very rare. Finally, there is the wireless connection. There is a tremendous advantage gained by wireless connections and it's because of this has become more and more popular to a point that it is just about industrial standard network connection. As the name suggests, a host on a wireless network does not need physical media to connect to the network. The host is attached to the wireless network interface and this can be internal or external. The interface will include some type of antenna that allows the host to transmit and receive information using radio waves. Some devices such as printers, laptops and even CCTV have built-in wireless adapters. Another type of wireless connection is Bluetooth that can be found in many other devices such as headphones, speakers and remote controls. So to recap on the network connections that has been discussed in this lesson are Ethernet connection, Integrated Service Digital Service or ISDN, Digital Subscriber Line or DSL, Dial-up Modem and Wireless Connection.